It is week nine of the college football season. We are back with our 10 favorite picks this weekend. I'm Austin, joined by Logan. Each of us have our five favorite picks for Saturday in the college football. But first off, Logan, let's recap yesterday. Pretty solid week. I was so close to bringing out the room. Grooms, a four and one sweep. I get a best bet cash. That's a first for me. You had a two and three week. The fans had a two and three week as well. Let's all have a great week for week nine. We can talk about some action packed games. As always, we track the fans' vote by just going down below, comment your favorite pick. And if you see a pick you really like, like it. And we track the most five liked comments. But Logan, I'm going to start off this week with my first pick. And I'm going to be going to a pretty decent showing where I could think an upset could happen. But I'm not taking an upset. I'm just going to be going to TCU West Virginia, taking the over 68 and a half points, currently minus 110 on DraftKings. If this does go up a point, I'm fine with that. I think these teams are going to combine for well over 70 points in this game. Now, look, TCU, we know what this team brings, and it's a lot of offense. Third in points per game at 44.7 per game. West Virginia, not too far behind them, 32nd, but averaging almost 35 a game. West Virginia offense, they're at home, and they play a lot better at home than they do on the road. And their three home games this year, 43, 65, and 42 points. If they can go out there and give me 65 points. I think we should cash this bet. But regardless, West Virginia also coming off only 10 points last week against a very good Texas Tech defense. I think they should correct things against TCU, who's allowing 26.7 points per game. And on the road, they've allowed 31 and 34 points per game. The both defenses are giving up over 400 yards of offense. And TCU... They cast the over for me last week. I just think this is the prime spot for both teams to give, score a lot of points. And also TCU, only seven-point favorites despite being a very high-ranked team. I think West Virginia keeps this game close, and that means they probably have to score to keep up with TCU. Give me that as my first pick. But, Logan, what you got for the people? Yeah, let's stay hot this week, Austin. You had a great week last week. Let's cash that one. I'm going to an SEC West showdown in this one. I'm going to Texas A&M versus Ole Miss for my first pick, and I'm taking Texas A&M on the money line. Plus 110 value right now on DraftKings is your best value in this one. I'm going to go ahead and take the underdog in this one. I love the value on it. And when you're in this point of the college football season, you do have to pick you know bets that you do like the value on. Kyle Field, prime time. Jimbo needs this win. Backs against the wall. This is this to me is a sort of like program, you know, defining win for Jimbo. And not program defining, but you you guys know what I mean. Like he's just on a scorching hot seat. They can't afford to lose against Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss in this one. If you look at last week, Austin's well aware. Texas A&M, 398 total yards of offense. What let them down last week was their defense, right? Something Jimbo Fisher always hangs his hat on. Their defense gave up 30 points to South Carolina. That simply is not going to cut it. If you look at Ole Miss defensively, though, they gave up 400 yards in total offense in each of their last three games to LSU, Auburn, and Vanderbilt. And I'd argue, you know what, uh, Texas A&M offense – has been anything but great and anything but consistent this year. But looking at the all those points or all those yards that, that Ole Miss's defense has given up, I definitely think there's potential for Texas A&M to be able to move uh, the ball up and down the field. Look at Ole Miss defense last week, 252 rushing yards last week to LSU. And that LSU, to me, was a very one-dimensional offense. Okay, look, Ole Miss let them back into that game. That was a game that Ole Miss led, had a pretty commanding lead, and they just let LSU take that game from them. I expect Texas A&M to win the Battle of the Trenches. Texas A&M's offense, 129 rushing yards last week. I expect them to build on that, have well over 150 yards rushing, and push around Ole Miss in this one. So I'm going to take the Aggies on the money line straight up in this one. Look, that pick that pick triggers some memories from last week as my only pick to lose was the Aggies in South Carolina. But I'm going to actually stick in the SEC, another battle of two elite teams. And I'm going to be going to the Arkansas-Auburn game, taking Arkansas minus three, currently minus 120 on Barstool's the best value you can get. Now, I did buy a half point because there's a lot of games that end on this field goal. And I've been wronged on a lot of games where it ends on three and I've taken minus three and a half and end up losing. So I at least want that push potential. We do know a lot of games can end on three. Obviously, a field goal can do that. Now, Arkansas, enters this game having lost six straight games to Auburn. That's not great, but that streak ends today as I think they're going to take down this uh, Auburn Tigers team, which hasn't looked good all year long. And look, the Razorbacks have made this game personal. They they know the last time they were in Auburn. I don't need to really remind any Arkansas Razorbacks fans, but Bo Nix had a he bobbled a snap and then he, he fumbled it. Then he threw it on the ground and they, it was just an intentional grounding hall fumble. It was craziness. And they ended up losing that game kind of because of that. KJ Jefferson, the quarterback for Arkansas, has said everybody has that memory. So this week, this is an extra personal for this team. And the Razorbacks haven't lost six straight to Auburn. I think this is the time to strike. Arkansas's offense, I trust them a lot more, averaging 32.7 points per game. Auburn, just 22.3. And ultimately, if Auburn does not control the tempo of this game and they don't come in here and be able to run the football against Arkansas, they're going to rely on their QB. He's thrown five touchdowns, 10 interceptions this year. Look, I just don't think they're going to be able to get it done. If Arkansas can get up with KJ Jefferson, 
should be able to pound the rock. And I just love the Razorbacks. I think they get it done. Minus three, even though they're on the road. I think they're favored for a reason. Give me the Tigers. But Logan, what's your next play? Go pick Suey for you in that one. But for mine, I'm going to specifically a team total in this one. I'm going to USC's team total this week, and I'm taking the over 45 and a half total points. If you look at that that line, you're just like, Logan, That's that really sticks out to me. That's a very high total against Arizona in this one. Look at the full game total, too. Now, I, I do want to first start out. I see, I've seen this on other books at 47 and a half, like for an instance on FanDuel. I played at 47 and a half because honestly, I think I think USC could and, and will soar over this. The total for this game, look at the full game total, set to 76 and a half. That's just immediately should jump out at you. With, with a lot of games in the 40s, 50s, maybe sometimes in the 60s, to see it at 76 and a half, the books are obviously expecting a shootout. And I'd rather bank personally on USC to score a majority of those points rather than Arizona's offense, because I really just can't trust Arizona's offense. And I've seen USC play a, a decent level of defense before, so I don't want to touch Arizona at all, except for I want USC to smoke them, right? Coming off a of bye, USC is looking to build off of 42 points against a really respectable Utah defense. And guys, you know, U USC's offense, we know they're hovering around the top 10 statistically, you know, on offense. 16th in, in scoring offense, 19th in yards per play. So they've been scoring at a good rate and they've been getting quick strike scoring, which that's what we need to cash this team total over. Look at Arizona's defense. Uh, they've been they've been awful statistically. No no way to sugarcoat that. 115th in scoring defense, 127th in rushing yards allowed, and 123rd in yards per play allowed. So they're really giving up all sorts of yards, all sorts of points, and they're allowing them to come quickly. We know that we know this Lincoln led uh, Lincoln Riley led team can score quick and 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 just get those big chunk yardage plays, which we we need to cash this team total over. Arizona's defense also has allowed 49 points to Washington. Oregon and Cal in their last four games three out of their last four opponents have went over this line so you really just look at that and you say I, I think USC is more than equipped to score all the points in this one wouldn't surprise me if, if USC put up a 50 burger on them and that's what I'm hoping on they they do for us today hey go Trojans hopefully they get that done and now we got a segue into our best bet of the weekend I finally got off the snide my first win yes last week I am on a heater and I'm continuing that this Saturday as I'll be going to the Ohio State Penn State game, a big time matchup. I'm actually taking the under 61 points, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now, last week, people questioned the pick. I took an under in the UCF game of 64 and a half. The week after, you saw UCF just dropped a 70 piece and obviously it went under with ease. But let's it, look, it's a little bit scary taking an under with Ohio State on the other side. They've scored 45 plus points six straight games. CJ Stroud, the QB, coming in as the Heisman favorite. He's only plus 100. There's no value in betting Stroud to win the Heisman. But I look at their schedule, played a lot of games at home, not a lot on the road. This will be their first true road test on the road versus what I consider to be an elite uh, program in Penn State. You could argue they already had a road game against Michigan State, but Michigan State has really stunk this year. And ultimately, this is going to be a packed crowd, early start. And Stroud and the offense are going to have to deal with a lot of crowd noise. We know Penn State packs the stadium, and they're going to be rocking it, especially against a very good, talented Ohio State team. Now, Penn State's defense has allowed 17, 7, 14, and 10 points at home this year. They've been very stout, have a very good secondary. Granted, Ohio State's going to be the best matchup they've seen, probably will see all season long. But at the end of the day, their secondary is capable of guarding, you know, the the elite Ohio State Buckeyes wide receivers like Marvin Harrison. I mean, they, they got to go out there and at least make it tough on those guys. Those guys have just been running up the scoreboard on other teams. They made Iowa look foolish last week. Iowa, one of the better defenses in the league. Granted, Iowa's offense didn't do him any help. And I think Sean Clifford will at least help out his Penn State defense. I don't think Sean Clifford's going to take any risks. I think this is a game that they need to play risk-free football. And they need to almost play perfect to beat an Ohio State team. And I think that's what Sean Clifford's just going to be dunking it down, trying to get completions, move the ball, chew the clock, get CJ Stroud off the field. And ultimately, I think the Nittany Lions at least can have a chance at covering this game. No team has gotten even close to covering with Ohio State over the past couple weeks. They're blowing teams out by 35, yet they're sitting set in the line at like 14 and a half, 15 and a half. I think final score, 31 to 20, Ohio State. I think this game goes under. And Logan, that's my best pick of the week. Can I hit two in a row? I said yes, but last week yours lost. I need I need a redemption. What you got? Horns down last week. Want want for me. But I, I I do like your pick, Austin. Let's continue that momentum. Let's both cash on the same week. How about that? And I'm going to an SEC showdown in this one. And I'm I'm definitely not picking a popular pick in this one. I'm taking Kentucky plus 12 and a half versus the Tennessee Volunteers in this one. Yes, I know, right? In, instantly, we're gonna everyone and their mother will be on Tennessee, and that's just kind of how I like like it, right? I've seen this line even drop to 11 and a half. On, on some books like Fandle, despite 
you know, 75% of the money and 75% of the bets being on Tennessee, according if you're looking just specifically at FanDuel. So you're seeing a lot of the public on, on Tennessee in this one. And you look, Kentucky needs to do what they did last week, uh, you know, against Mississippi State. Last week against Mississippi State, they held Mississippi State, a, a very high-powered offense, but by the way, to 225 y- yards of total offense. And what they did last week to kind of limit that was they pounded the rock as well. Rodriguez, their running back, at 197 rushing yards. If they can build on that and just control the the, the chew clock in the trenches, that's kind of their their pathway to to cover in this one. You know, I I see Kentucky's defense also. Statistically, they're a good defense. Ninth in scoring defense, only allowing a little over 16 points per game. They will certainly obviously have their hands full against Tennessee, being that top 10 offense led by Hendon Hooker, who's just looked outstanding this year. But you have to remember, college football, it's it's a season-long thing, and you have to take each game kind of in a vacuum. I actually think, if you're looking at this one, this is a very dangerous spot for uh, Tennessee because who's on their schedule you know the following week it's Georgia that's a this is an easy look ahead game tell me Kentucky wouldn't wouldn't want to you know pay pay back Tennessee if you look at this rivalry between these two SEC East teams it's been very lopsided you'll all you'll see the the you know the stats heavily in, in Tennessee's favor as far as this rivalry so I think this this scenario sets up really well for Kentucky to maybe play them close I, I don't know I, I'm not calling an upset but it wouldn't surprise me. And if you look at the, their blueprint to cover in this one, I think it's kind of similar to what, what they did in a hostile environment in at, at UF, right? They ran the ball. They were physical up front, offensive line, defensive line. They just made it yucky. And that's that's what Tennessee doesn't really want. Tennessee wants quick strike offense, you know, down the field, chunk yardage. And if Kentucky wins the, wins the battle in the trenches, I see the Wildcats playing them sneaky close in this one. That's, and that's why I'm going with it today. Hey, Logan, I love the call. I think we're going 2-0 and on best bets this week. We're speaking it into existence. Let's keep this train moving. Go to our fourth picks and then our fifth picks of the weekend. Dumpster diving is on the way for you, Logan. But first off, I'm going to California and taking the cow. Bear, I'm taking them. Plus 17 and a half. Taking on Oregon, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now, this is the perfect letdown spot for the Oregon Ducks. They're coming off a big-time win against UCLA last week. Cal, on the other side, lost three in a row, two of them on the road. And their defense actually has played pretty well. Their defense is keeping them in games. They just need the offense to step up a little bit. But the defense only allowing 22.6 points per game, which is big time. Now, similar to week three, you saw the Ducks have a big-time win at home against BYU, who is 12th ranked at the time. Next week. Big letdown spot. The defense didn't show up. I think they won 44 to 41 against the Washington State team, which isn't necessarily the best team in, in college, far from the worst. Just very middle tier team, very similar to a Cal team like this. Cal played Oregon last year, lost 24 to 17. That was at Oregon. They're at home this week. And Bo Nix, man, these stats, look at his home road splits. They're ridiculous. At home, Bo Nix is the is Joe Burrow from LSU days. He's 37 touchdowns and two interceptions in his career at home. On the road, Not so much, or even on a neutral site. 19 touchdowns, 17 interceptions in college. Look, if he turns over the ball, I think it's going to be tough for Oregon to just score some points. If he's struggling, Cal, we're not asking them to win this game. Jack Plummer, their QB, has been solid this year. 12 touchdowns, three interceptions, completing over 60% of his passes. We don't need Cal to win. We just need them to be within 17 points. That's a big line to cover if Oregon's potentially in a letdown spot on the road. I think Cal's certainly good enough to keep this game at least within 17 points. Maybe it's maybe they lose by seven or ten, but I think they're capable of getting it done. That's my fourth pick. Logan, what you got? Yeah, on, on mine, I'm, I'm once again I'm continuing the trend of not picking uh, things that are going to be very popular in our comment section. But oh well, right? We're going Notre Dame versus Syracuse, and I'm taking the Fighting Irish plus three in this one. You look at the line first of all, four and three Notre Dame, only getting three points on the road against six and one Syracuse. I faded Syracuse against the spread in the last two weeks, and I've eaten my humble pie. I've been wrong today. I'm repenting for my sins, and I'm trusting the Catholics. To cover for me today look at look at this one right syracuse matches up better on paper but the line just doesn't reflect it right the carrier dome it has been a, one of the better environments to play in recently and it's just there notre dame's only getting three points so what let's make sense of this line right syracuse sixth in scoring defense and ninth in yards per play allowed they looked great against dj uyunga away for clemson last week but then k club came in and, that, and then D, DJ just kind of became an afterthought. Clemson did end up winning that game late. And I kind of saw some danger signs for Syracuse in that one. I think that was one that Syracuse would have really liked to have, and they just not right right there ready for it. If you look at Notre Dame's offense, 
They look to build off what they did last week. 223 rushing yards and 44 points against UNLV. I know that's UNLV, and statistically, Syracuse is a lot better team than UNLV. I just think up front that Notre Dame's going to be very motivated to play this one. They're going to they're kind of going to kind of run the ball, chew the clock, make Syracuse just have to play some big boy football. And I think Notre Dame has the athletes to to compete with Syracuse. That's what, to me what it comes down to. Can they just keep this game close can, within a field goal? And I do think Notre Dame has has that potential. They and and can certainly potentially even win it outright. Logan, I, I love it. The comments are not going to love it. And if they Syracuse ready does win it. and cover, I will ban you from fading the orange the rest of the season long. Now for my final get pick, I need to go full screen for this one because I'm going to this game action. UCF taking on Cincinnati. They're back at the bounce house. And I'm taking the over 56 points minus 110. I'm betting GM. Now, yes, it would be true. My best bet last week was the under in the UCF ECU game, but they're back at home and I need some skin on this game. I want to be in the stands cheering something on. I need something to be cheering for. And while I think UCF might win, I don't really want to have financial and emotional ties onto the UCF Knights because I am an all alumni from there. And I don't want to pit bet Cincinnati then be rooting to lose money. So instead, I just root for points. Now, UCF's offense struggled last week, 13 points at ECU returning home to the bounce house where they've averaged 41.6 points per game this season. Cincinnati's defense is not what it used to be last season. That's what the, they pride themselves on. They obviously lost guys like Kobe Bryant, Sauce Gardner to the draft. They've allowed 31, 21, 27 points on the road this season. Now, UCF also can remember last year they got spanked by the Bearcats, losing 56 to 21 in Cincinnati. They've also lost three straight to the Bearcats. Yet we see the line is making UCF a favorite in this one. And while I don't necessarily know if I agree with the line, I think UCF gets back some revenge and gets back to what their offense has been capable of doing. I'm not proud of you know the offense they trot out there, not the best passing game, but they're still a camp capable of offense. And both these two teams are going to run pretty fast tempo. So asking for 57 points to cash the over. Look, these two teams can light up for 20 points in any given quarter. And I think they're just going to raise up the scoreboard. There's going to be a lot of big plays. It's going to be a bounce house game. Middle of, you know, perfect weather on a Saturday at 3.30. I'll be in the stands cheering on some points. And that's going to be my fifth and final pick of the week, Logan. UCF, Cincinnati, over 56. But let's let's throw you on in the dump, sir. Get on in there. You lost your first pick of the dumpster diving segment. Yeah. Four and one on the year. We need a winner. Who you got this week? Yeah, I'd argue this is the biggest dumpster diving oh, matchup ever, right? We're going to UMass versus New Mexico State, and I'm taking UMass plus two and a half in this one. Let's get back on track in the dumpster segment, right? Look, you got two and five New Mexico State taking on one and six UMass. That's why what I said, guys, this 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 is a battle of the teams that always get pummeled by the Alabamas. They're, these are these are the two teams you always see first on the schedule of the big guys, and they lose 56 to nothing normally, right? And you can't spell, you know, you can't spell UMass without three letter, the last three letters of the words. You guys finish that. That's not for me to, to say on this one. Look, this New Mexico State team, I just know first and foremost, is not worthy of 83% of the 83% of the bets being on them. According to FanDuel, that's where the public percentage is. And I think the public is, is just asking to get wrong, right? You know, you know, laying the points of New Mexico State in this one. Yikes, right? Now this is the first game too. You got to do some line reading, and that's kind of what this the the premise of this dumpster pick is, right? This is the first game that UMass isn't a double digit underdog since being in a pick'em way earlier in the season against Stony Brook. In that game versus Stony Brook, they won outright, right? Normally, if you're looking at the UMass line, they're like 28 point underdogs. Normally, just because of how bad of a team they are. So the fact that they're only getting two and a half to this New Mexico State team. That certainly gets my attention. You know, they're a one-win football team. If you look at statistically these two teams, how they match up, they're almost identical, right? UMass does have the slight edge at, at you know, at running the ball, though. They're 49th in, in rushing yards per game, while New Mexico State is only 80th. And I think that could play a little bit into this one. Look, when you when you don't have anything going offensively, it's about basics. It's about moving the chains. It's about running the ball. And I think at least UMass is better equipped to do that than New Mexico State. New Mexico State also hasn't won a road game, right? They're 0-3 on the road. UMass, their lone win came at home with that crazy home crowd behind them. I think UMass is definitely in line to, to you know, potentially win this game, but definitely cover for the dumpster diving segment today. And that's that's where we're going, you know, in this one, Austin. Plug the nose hard yeah. on that one. <laughs> Plug your nose. Hopefully you move to five and one. Those dumpster diving games are electric, whether you watch them or you just check the final score at the end of the day. Those are our five favorite breaks, each of us. Let's see how we do. We'll post the video next week. Who knows if we'll be on Tuesday or Friday, but we'll make sure to get it out, get it out to you guys every single week. A couple other videos popping up on the screen. We'll see you guys in the future videos, and we'll see you guys then. Peace out.